Yo, it's been a minute since we've done a complete tour of the Rep Harriman. Things are always changing, so let's jump in and see what we've got. Of course, this first rep right here, we've got my buddy Flapjack right up at the top there. Of course, he is a black throat monitor and is a little pistol too. I'm gonna go ahead and show you Flamin' Hot because of course, he just came over to this side and actually is really doing well over here. This weekend is the first time that he's gonna be actually able to come out, which is gonna be absolutely incredible. Of course, he's just a beautiful red, orange, bearded dragon that's absolutely wonderful. So that is really cool. Of course, we've got Helen, our no-eyed snake, which is over here too. And that's the kind of thing that's cool is that oftentimes people come in and they'll come to this side to start the tour. So a lot of times this is where people are gonna start the tour and they're gonna see these animals first and work around. And that's kind of what I'm gonna do for you guys right now. Of course, Helen is the no-eyed ball python. We've had her for quite some time now, probably two and a half years. She does absolutely amazing. Kids love this animal because of course it doesn't have eyes so they're not afraid of it. Down below we just have a beautiful skink. This is Irwin, which is the northern blue tongue skink. And again, just another great animal. And I love that this area over here is a place where a lot of people can congregate and it's kind of just a bunch of really cool animals. Everything can come out and be really cool. Of course, the blue tongue skink, absolutely a wonderful animal. He's super cool, super docile, and just a way to kind of get people started, right? So if people come to the zoo, they come over here, they start with these animals. They're kind of smaller. They're really nice animals and it works out really well. Of course, we don't take out baby Kush, although we take them out when I'm messing with them, but not during open hours. But I'm telling you what, baby Kush will become a beautifully tame animal in no time. I promise you that. Of course, this is hugely successful when it comes to kids. And these are little gear up fish, sometimes called doctor fish, and they just kind of exfoliate the skin, right? Of course, people can sit up here, put their feet in there. They love it. You know that. That is super cool. Over on this side, of course, we've got Drogo. Hey, Drogo, where are you doing? Oh, look at Drogo right there. Of course, this is my two-toed sloth, one of the newer animal ambassadors here at the Reptarium, and people love him. Hi, buddy. How are you doing today? You doing good, baby boy? I tell you what, having a mammal here is pretty cool. And like I've always said, the closest thing you can come to a reptile in a mammal sense is probably a sloth. They are a mammal. They are not a reptile, but they do kind of act like a reptile a little bit in the sense that they can't control control their body temperature. They kind of act and move the same way. Of course, Perdita, look at how beautiful she is climbing up this branch right here. I love this enclosure. One of my favorite enclosures on this side for sure because Perdita is so beautiful and she really utilizes all the branches and all the type of stuff. It's just so absolutely incredible. And of course we have my girl Salt and my girl Pepper here. Pepper's thinking, oh, they're thinking they're getting fed. No food today, bud. No, no food, no food, no food. Yep, just come on out. Ah, there you go, girl. I tell you what, she is always ready to feed. There's no doubt about that. She's getting a little bit of an attitude towards her, but once you take her out and handle her, she is absolutely wonderful. I mean, it was a dream to have an albino alligator. I cannot believe that I actually own one. And of course, Pepper is amazing too. We'll just go ahead and put her back. This is always one of the most popular exhibits in the entire place. There's no doubt about it. People being able to hold an alligator and an albino one at that. Of course, we've got pickles right here. We've got gherkin over here. And again, you know, things are always changing here. We're switching up exhibits. We're moving some stuff around. We're bringing new animals in. We're putting the other animals off exhibit for a short while. Sunfire, I've talked about, is a tiger reticulated python that is going to be an extremely good animal ambassador down the road. She's going to get giant because of her lineage, 18, 20, plus foot but is super docile so she's not going to be like lucy she's going to be absolutely incredible of course moo moo over here which is our other cow reticulated python is another really beautiful animal obviously perdita is incredible but this is just another cow retic that has a lot different color to it compared to perdita so again two beautiful reticulated pythons that are the same genetics but of course look completely different and of course have completely different attitudes perdita is really chill whereas moo moo is a little bit crazy and then this girl here oh Oh my gosh, what an absolute pleasure working with this animal. This of course is Tiana, hi baby girl. This is what they call a Lewis eye hybrid. So it's in the Cyclura family, right? Kind of like the rhino iguana, same type of thing from, but from different areas. And uh, she is absolutely, look at her. She loves the pet, she loves being involved. So she is wonderful. And again, another thing that we can open up just like Bella and just let people pet her and stuff like that. And she does come out every now and then. So she's really wonderful. Of course, on this side, my boy Al, Machino, the Machino reticulated python is actually just coming out of shed. So he's still got kind of cloudy eyes, looking a little bit dulled out, but still a wonderful snake. I mean, look at how cool 
cool that snake is. Definitely another one of the popular animals. This guy is out all the time when we're on tours and when they're open to the public. So this is a beautiful animal. And again, I love this enclosure much like Perdita's because it likes to use all of it too. It's always climbing around. It looks absolutely wonderful. Our black-headed pythons, they're actually sitting up together right now. This is Snap and Pop, of course. And of course, those black heads are super cool. They're maybe about three quarters grown now. These guys can get like nine, maybe even 10 foot. So they're pretty impressive animals. Of course, speaking of an impressive animal, we've got Jeffrey who is getting pretty big now. This is actually a hypogranite Burmese python. And he's gonna get a lot larger than this, but nevertheless, he is a beautiful animal and lovely to hold. I mean, just a really great animal. He's kind of that perfect size, to be honest with you. He's big, he's impressive, but at the same time, he's not so big that a kid can't hold it. So this is one of my go-to for sure when someone wants to hold a snake. I think that it's definitely top two or three in the entire zoo, to be honest with you. Of course, in this enclosure, I love this because we have our red-footed tortoises, which is uh, Chip and Dale. And then, of course, we have hinds up here in the corner and Frenches, which are getting big. Of course, the crimson albino iguanas in a normal yellow albino iguana. Absolutely wonderful. Hey, listen, there's no way we can possibly do a tour of the zoo without showing my girls here. Look, oh, I became right out. See her right there? She actually was like, Dad, you gonna feed me? But I'm not feeding you today, girl. I promise I'm not gonna feed you, but look at that. Look at how incredible she is. And of course, Aries is in the water over here. He's just chilling out. And Ivy doesn't come out of the water that much, to be honest with you. Typically when she comes out, she wants to eat, but she just ate a giant meal just literally a handful of days ago. So girl, you still have a little bit of time. I love you. We're definitely gonna be doing some more anaconda stuff here pretty soon, because there's some pretty crazy myths about anacondas we're gonna try to disprove. And then of course, we've got our little turtle pond. We absolutely love these little guys. Some of these guys are starting to get some pretty good size to them and they're absolutely loving it. I just, I think this is great and kids love the turtle pond. Definitely one of the, the things where you see kids just standing on these stones, hands in the water. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Of course, my guys Diddy and Dixie here. Of course, this is Diddy and he just wants to always come out and play for sure. I mean, he's such a good boy. You're such a good boy. And whenever Diddy comes out, Dixie comes out right after. See, hi little monkey. What are you doing silly monkey? So these guys are great. Again, they always come right out on the ground. We get to feed them. We get to interact with them. They're like our little puppy dogs. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely love these guys. You guys are amazing. I love you. I love you, baby. You're such a good little monkey. <laughs> I tell you what, I couldn't imagine not having these guys. And listen, they're at that age where they could potentially breed this year. Of course, Dixie is just a little bit smaller, but they're typically about this age when they can potentially produce. So if we get any luck, maybe later this year, we're gonna have some eggs from these guys. And that basically is the overview of 2.0, our first expansion into the new zoo. This is the older expansion, starting of course with this beautiful pond. Love the three waterfalls. Of course, Bowser, my giant tapping turtle over here. Come on, Bowser, what are you doing, bud? Just look at this guy right here. I mean, that is giant. 41 plus years old, about 100 pounds right now, gonna get a lot bigger and he is super cool. So definitely a little prehistoric way to walk in and see a cool feature that is really cool. Of course, on this side, we've got Nova and Lilith, our frilled dragons that of course will typically have babies. So hopefully with any luck here pretty soon, we're gonna have some eggs. Of course, Lilith is way up there in the corner. Nova is here. Now, Nova typically comes right down here and hangs out almost all the time. But the truth is, is during the breeding season, he's oftentimes up with his girlfriend and that's just the way it is. So here the next couple months, we probably won't see Nova down nearly as much, but we always take him off when people are in because he's just absolutely amazing. We've got a Doomrose boa right here named Breadlow. And then of course, Marshmallow just moved over here just as we're doing that new little renovation. So Marshmallow is right here, of course. Marshmallow Marshmallow used to be where Flaming Hot is now. And of course, this is an ivory Burmese python. So again, one of the giants. Gonna get, you know, 17, 18 foot one day potentially. Beautiful snake, absolutely adorable. Love him to death, really well to handle. Again, another kind of entry level kind of giant snake, right? When you're talking about someone that wants to hold something that's a little bigger than a corn snake, but not as big as say, you know, a 10 foot python. And then of course, we've got this guy here, the opposite spectrum of that white snake, which of course, is Night Fury. Whoo! Look at that snake right there. Man, that thing is gorgeous. Look at the glimmer and iridescence coming off it. That is one beautiful snake. And I've often said, he's gonna get big. And when he gets big, he is going to be a stunner. 
There is no doubt about that. And then, of course, probably one of our most popular animals here, too, to see, just because it's so freaky. Of course, we've got Ben and Jerry. This is Ben. That's Jerry. They have the little smiley face on them. Of course, it's called polycephaly, a two-headed snake, doing absolutely wonderful, super cool animals. And again, one of those things that is a great conversation starter, right? When people do come into the reptarium and aren't sure about reptiles, they see this, like, how did that happen? Then you can start getting them interested and teaching them things. It's a really cool animal. Super excited to have that. We actually have Peppa the hognose snake in here, which again is another beautiful snake and really cool. I mean, take a look at that little face right there. I mean, that is a face that everyone's going to love, right? Really cool, unique animals. Love Western hognose snakes. We've got Mango the Cayman lizard in here, which is an aquatic lizard. Super cool. Over on this side, of course, we have our green basilisk. And these guys are amazing. Now, we should be getting some eggs from these guys pretty soon. Females are loaded up with eggs, and hopefully we'll have some of those eggs here and patch out some baby bass. And of course, our little alligators. Now, of course, these alligators would get home from Gatorland. We keep them for one year and then we send them back. But they are super cool. Look at how cool these guys are. These guys are probably only about three months old or something like that. But we have two sets of alligators, the smallest ones and then the slightly bigger ones back here. And, and people can actually feed them. So smaller kids, we have them feed the smaller ones. Bigger kids with a little bit more courage, they feed the big ones, and that is absolutely incredible. Of course, Beetlejuice, we've been working on that, the Bell's Face Lace Monitor. Been working on trying to get him habituated and kind of you know settled in. It's taking a little bit of time, I'm not gonna lie, but it's doing much, much better now, and we've been able to get him out. So he's gonna eventually be a really great animal ambassador that can come out and people can interact with him, much like some of our other monitor lizards. Then, now, this guy's got an absolutely huge enclosure for it. We're thinking about adding a couple more of these. Come on, way back here. Hey, this, of course, is Al, the cane toad or marine toad from Suriname. I mean, look at how big that monkey is right there. Now he has a big enclosure. He can hop around and really enjoy himself. But like I said, we're thinking about adding one or two other ones in here because I think it'll be really cool to see him all jump, jumping around. But there's no doubt that people get a kick out of this guy because he is super dope. Over on this side, we actually have Carl, the emerald tree boa. Wow, look at how beautiful that animal is right there. So this is basically just a northern emerald tree boa, but man, I tell you, and this is an animal that really started my love of reptiles when I was young. So looking at pictures of emerald tree boas just blew me away, and I absolutely love them. Of course, another enclosure that I really do enjoy is this one right here. This is one of our first enclosures that I made with this kind of cork bark hiding spot for, of course, Maisie the corn snake. And Maisie is just a wonderful snake, a great animal ambassador, comes to all of our zoo to use, always comes out for the kids because it's so docile and so cool. And it's been around kids its entire life doing educational shows. And again, it spends all of its time right here in this hide, this cork hide, which I think is absolutely amazing. So ever since we built this enclosure, I've loved it and I still love it to this day. And of course, we have a handful of lychee geckos. This is actually Reptar, the Bosi Island right here. And uh, he's about two and a half years old. So the Bosi Island stay a little bit smaller than the GT stuff, but nevertheless, really cool animals. And lychees are cool. They're so soft. It's almost like velvet. Unbelievable. So every time we pull this guy out, people hold it. They're like, oh my God, I never knew a lizard could feel that way. It's super cool. And then of course there's Snazzy. Snaz is a great animal. My friend Rhonda donated to the zoo at the very, very start of when we opened up. And it's just a wild type Burmese python, but just a wonderful, wonderful snake. You know, always super docile, super friendly. And again, one of those snakes that's not too big to handle, but big enough to be pretty darn impressive. And it's neat to have that wild type, just normal looking snake every now and then. So you can explain the difference of color phases and that kind of living art. So Snaz is an amazing animal. And of course we have one of our newer ambassadors. This is that white bearded dragon that is absolutely incredible. It's just a little guy, you know, probably about six months old. And of course, it originally was named Bones. Now we changed it to Betty White. It is a female, so I think it's absolutely cool. I'm a huge Betty White fan, so I'm glad I have a lizard named after her. And uh, again, you know, we have bigger bearded dragons like Flame and Hot, but it's kind of cool to have one that's a little smaller too, because we do have smaller kids come all the time, and this is kind of perfect size for them to handle. And of course, talking about big frogs, kind of like Al, this is actually Chunky Monkey, of course, the African bullfrog. These things are so cool. They're sometimes called pixie frogs. The reason they're called pixie frogs is the actual scientific name is Pixacephalus dispersus. So that's why they call them pixie frogs for those of you guys that didn't know that. Regardless, pretty cool. And this is a female. They stay a little bit smaller. Males can get about twice that size. Of course, I always show love to Ivy, but the truth is my love of anaconda started with this little girl here, of course, Verde. Verde is still gonna always be so special to me. And she's definitely starting to grow up a little bit. Still got a long ways to go, but every week that goes 
by as she's eating, she's getting bigger and bigger. And then of course there's Joker, the scaleless Texas rat snake. This guy is so cool. And again, much like I talked about with the lychee geckos, this freaks people out because you hold it and it feels nothing like you think a snake feels like, right? It's like really soft, really smooth, almost like velvety, really amazing. And look at that face right there. I mean, that thing is so gorgeous. That's why we call him Joker because we always say he's happy because he's always smiling. Down here we have Argamus Prime, the Argus monitor that Noah really has taken a liking to. I mean, basically that's Noah's animal. He works with it every day and stuff like that. And he's definitely tamed it up pretty good. And up top here, we actually have Santana, the Savannah monitor. Now, Savannah monitors are cool because they don't get quite as big as some of the giant monitors, but they're still a pretty big animal. This is about maybe halfway grown, something like that, but they're super docile and chill animals. I mean, you can just kind of sit around and watch TV with this guy. It's not like some of the other monitors that are always on the go and running around and stuff like that, but nevertheless, that thing is dope, and I love Savannah monitors. Then right here, you can see we've got our Carusha Zabrata, or what they call monkey tail skinks. There's actually a pair of them, and earlier today, I actually saw the male trying to mount the female, which was pretty cool, so hopefully we'll have babies that have live young one baby per year on rare occasion twins but that's it so uh, it's pretty cool there and then down below of course we have chicken strip He's starting to go into shed here, so he's looking a little ratty. We're gonna have to get him and soak and see if we can get that shed off, but still a beautiful animal. Of course, the only albino Nile monitor in the world, so definitely a very cool animal. These guys are really cool. These are what they call Dominican mountain boas right here, and these are just super interesting animals. These are the ones that I've said will sit at the edge of a cave and pick bats off as they're flying out at night, so they're super dope, and sometimes they can be really red. This one is a little bit more tan, but still a beautiful snake. And speaking of beautiful snakes, although you never can see this animal she's usually right around here this of course is that egg-eating snake and I love these guys to death we still haven't caught these guys eating but look at how she moves look at that movement is just so unusual and then that strike woohoo I tell you what that's a pretty snake and it's really just one of the most unique looking snakes ever this has only been on display here for the last month or so but it's pretty cool and we're gonna get some great footage for eating eggs pretty soon new enclosures here nothing in them yet so we're working on what we put in them pretty excited about it I love this corner now it's so much more you know useful now because you can see the entire thing rather than being way up here where you can't see of course down below here we have tiger Lily, which is the, oh, she's drinking too. Take a look at that, that's so cool. Of course, that is a Brazilian rainbow boa. And then on this side, we actually have this cool little dude here. This is actually, of course, the Geico gecko. Not really. This is what they call a day gecko, a Felsuma grandis. So that's a beautiful animal, but they're not really handling animals. You take them out, they go running around. You'd never find them again because they would disappear on you. On this cage here, I absolutely love this snake right here. This is what they would call a Molendorfi or a hundred flower rat snake. Look at the head and the colors and the tail. I mean, whoo that snake is a cool snake. You don't see a lot of these captive bred. This is captive bred and it's pretty darn awesome. And then down below here, another really cool Chinese snake is a mandarin rat snake and another captive bred animal that when you get wild ones they do really poorly but the captive bred ones do fantastic so this is one that we actually produced about four years ago and raised up so this is a cool one to be on display too and of course my girl bella Hey baby girl, what are you doing sweetie? She is my first rhino iguana and really my first kind of pet animal that ultimately was going to go to the zoo. When we got Bella, we knew we were going to make a zoo. It was still a couple years after we got her that we did the zoo, but we knew she would one day be a huge part of it and trust me she is. People love her to death. She always comes down for pets and she loves her bananas, right? Bella the banana shirt, by the way, link in the description. Then walking around this side, of course, we have Snowflake which is a beautiful, just white rat snake. Of course, leucistic Texas rat snake. Very aggressive feeder, can be a little bit cage defensive at times, but once you get her out, she is really stunning. And then earlier, we actually showed you Breadloaf, the Dumeril's boa. This is actually Gerald, which is another Dumeril's boa, but a little bit smaller one. So again, we like having these types of things where there's like smaller ones, bigger ones, stuff like that, depending on the person that's actually handling it, right? So this is a beautiful snake here that comes out quite often. And then down below here, we actually have these guys, the Europlanes frimbriatus, which of course are the giant leaf tail geckos. Look at both of them. This is actually Cosmo and Wanda right here. And those eyes are just absolutely stunning. And then of course, we got these new little, look at that, how cute that little lizard is in the cup right there. Oh my God, he's sticking his little head out. These are called Gastropholus persina, or the green belly keel lizards, which is just super cool. We have three of them in here, absolutely little hunters, 
great animals, love them to death. Then of course there's the arachnid wall. We've got zombie, our rose hair tarantula here. We've got a little curly here. We've got Brazilian black. We've got a salmon bird eater up here. And then we have a various other kind of bugs and stuff like that. Definitely something I want to expand more into when we expand the reptarium because the bug wall definitely is super cool and I think we can do a lot more with it because it's super awesome. Of course we've got my guy Elvis here. Come on now, everyone knows Elvis and everyone loves Elvis. Hey buddy, what are you doing sweetheart? Hi buddy. What are you doing? Of course, we'll let Elvis just come out and walk around a little bit. That's right, bud. You can come out and play if you want. I love you. He's such a good boy. Of course, he's an Asian water monitor, about four and a half years old now. And he's definitely, I mean, he's everything to me. I mean, I love this animal more than anything. I couldn't imagine life without him. He is super cool. You can just have some fun, all right? We're gonna walk around and see the rest of the zoo. Is that all right with you? Of course, we have some of our newer animals in here, which are actually milk frogs. And they're actually way up top here. And then of course, Honey the Piebald Ball Python. Just such a cool animal. I mean, come on. Again, just like I mentioned, the green tree pythons got me into snakes when I was younger looking at pictures. Piebalds are what really got me obsessed with ball pythons. And she is an absolute beauty. This is actually Milton, the Euromastix. I love this animal. It is so cool. Of course, we just got that chuck wall I'm gonna show you in a minute. And they're very similar animals, but from different parts of the world for sure. But look at how cool it is. Look at that spiny little tail. Another super famous animal here when people come to visit is of course Potato, the Centralian Blue Tongue String, or what they call a Telinquin Multifaciata. Just an absolutely awesome animal. Again, looks like a potato, acts like a potato. Just an unbelievably cool animal. One day I hope to have this guy a mate so we can maybe produce some of these. Right back in the back, we actually have Toothless, the melanistic Asian water monitor. Of course, we can't let Toothless out right now because Elvis is walking around. They probably won't like each other. They are uh, they're roommates, there's no doubt about it, but we definitely keep them separate. But wow, is he getting big. My tiger, Amazon tree boa. Beautiful snake right there. What are you doing, buddy? Whoa, look at that little monkey right there. And that's the thing, this guy's a little pistol. There's no doubt about it. You gotta be on the, the defensive at all times with this guy because he'll come out and he'll get you every time. But what a beautiful snake. Absolutely a great display snake. But listen, we don't take this out for people because obviously things wouldn't end well. We have an albino Kunisher rat snake. Super cool right here. And this is another snake that we take on all of our events too because it's really cool. It's super colorful and it's kind of a neat just reddish orange snake. You don't see that very often. Then I love this guy right here. This is Lemon Drop. This is actually a Darwin's albino carpet python. I love carpet pythons and that is a dream animal. When the first albino carpet python showed up in my newsfeed one day when I was looking. I was like, oh my God, they're incredible. And now we have one here at the zoo. And see the two little ants right there? Of course, that's chopsticks, the two-headed red-eared slider. I mean, how cool is that, right? And then, of course, one of our newest animals here is the chuckawalla. This is actually Shakira. That's what the crew named it. I'm sorry. You guys had some good suggestions, but Shakira ended winning out with the crew. Sometimes you just got to keep the peace, if you know what I mean. Nevertheless, super cool animal. It's going to get really large and super docile. Again, I mentioned it's a little bit like that Euromastic, but without the stubby tail. And of course, these guys come from the southwest part of the United States and northern Mexico. Of course, we have Daisy down here. Of course, that's Lucy's sister, the albino reticulated python, our second largest snake, 18 foot 6 inches. Up top, we've got Butterscotch, of course, which again is another pretty nice snake about 15 foot long definitely a handful love feeding that animal no doubt about it we've got a few different chameleons here some panthers and even a couple veils but this is actually fruit loop the ambulomi panther chameleon love that animal of course we've got the, the nosy bee and the nosy phala we've got a nosy bee female as well and like i had mentioned we also have some veil chameleons really cool down here we actually have a mexican black king snake one that has quite a bit of pattern to it to be honest with you it's still a really cool animal but we'll get jet black when it gets older and then of course we have loki the scaleless corn snake again another snake that's just kind of small and kind of cool for kids to handle and absolutely wonderful the same type of mutation is joker but this is a corn snake whereas joker is a texas rat snake this is actually an apricot albino horn frog really cool i mean those big chubby frogs they're like little java huts of course we've got our mangrove snake here we don't take that one out that is called khalifa over here more of the chameleons on this side casper's in his water here the beautiful white snake with black eyes, reticulated python. Then of course my girl here that's always super popular. An animal that comes out every single tour, every single event, and is out a lot when we're open to the public. And of course that is my girl Sunrise. 
Look at this beautiful snake right there. I mean, whoo doggy. That snake is a ripper right there. And again, it's big enough to be super impressive, but you can still actually handle it. But a snake you can't handle is actually my girl Lucy here, who's up in her tree, just hanging out right there. Look at how awesome that is. You tell me that even giant snakes don't like to climb, right? She's all over this cage all the time. She spends a lot of time on the ground, don't get me wrong, but she's up in that tree, she's hanging out. This is like perks, right? You know, if the prey was walking by right now, wham, she'd grab it. That's a 20 foot, two inch snake, almost 200 pounds. That is definitely a showstopper, no doubt about it. And then last animals here, of course, talk about showstopper, my girl Matilda. How beautiful is that girl right there? And then of course, we've got three leopard tortoises. Of course, we've got Steve, we've got Big Mama, and we've got Franklin, and of course, we've got my girl Matilda. And then that, is the reptarium as a whole guys that's the tour every now and then i like to do that because things change around here and remember big changes are coming with the expansion of the reptarium and potentially a second floor for an aquarium going to be ridiculous guys so i hope you enjoyed if you did here is a playlist of how we made the reptarium on this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel please turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow